All right, number 46, the graph of the quadratic function is shown on the grid, which equation best represents the axis of symmetry. So even if you don't know what exactly the axis of symmetry means right there, we're talking about something with symmetry, so it needs to be the same on both sides. And if we're talking about sides where something's the same, we're talking about the line that cuts this graph in half and it's the same on both sides and they call it an axis because it's kind of like a y axis or an x axis where it goes up and down All right. so this is your axis of symmetry right here it's a vertical line you need to remember your vertical lines are usually written in x equals format it crosses through 2 or it crosses your vertex here your vertex is 2 comma 6 but it's the x value of your vertex that is your equation of your axis of symmetry there. So G is the best answer in that case. Now, as far as why would someone accidentally pick some of these other ones? Well, maybe Y equals 6 because it goes through your vertex, but that goes horizontally. We don't want it to go horizontally. We want it vertically. Uh, X equals 4. Not really sure where you'd get that, or I'm sorry, y equals 4. I'm not sure exactly where you would get that from. Uh, or x equals 0. I mean, x equals 0 is like this right here. There's nothing symmetrical about that line right there. So I think this one's a little straightforward, or hopefully pretty straightforward there. So remember, it has to cross the x-axis, or uh, the x portion of your vertex. So it crosses at x equals 2. Okay, next one here is dealing with function notation. What you got to get in your head is when you see this notation right here, this is basically say evaluate when x is 11. Evaluate. Okay, I'm spelling it wrong there. Evaluate when x is equal to 11, which is basically meaning plug in where x is plug in 11. So 5 parentheses, we're going to plug in 11 there. So 11 squared and then plus 1. And then what's 16 right there? Okay, now you can go and do all this one line in your calculator if you would like, if you have a graphing calculator. I don't have one directly here in front of me, so I'm going to punch this out here. 11 squared, remember you need to do PEMDAS on these here. And then remember that's parentheses, that's exponents, that's multiplication and division together, and then that's addition and subtraction together from left to right. Okay, so the first thing here is parentheses. So inside the parentheses, then we kind of start over with our rules. We look at exponents. Then so exponents inside of there, that's gonna be 121 once we square eleven. Okay, next we still have parentheses and we can simplify inside of the parentheses. So we're going to simplify that 121 plus 1 right there. So that will be, I guess, 122. Okay, you got your 122 times 5, and that gets you 610. And then once you add your 16 right there, that's going to be 626. And hopefully that is an answer choice. It is. It is D. So be careful. I bet you some of these other answer choices are answer choices if you do the order wrong as far as PEMDAS. So be kind of careful. I bet you one of those answers is if you accidentally plug in to the wrong spot. When it says P parentheses 11, that means plug in for X, plug in 11. Okay. Now, next ones uh, right here, these are uh, two lines right there is a system of equations and it's asking which is best represented by this graph now there's a couple different ways you can do this you can go and graph all sets of lines and see which ones match which isn't a bad you know technique uh, the only deal with the graphing calculators you have to have it solve for y if you want to graph if you have like the TI-84s so for graphing calculator solve for y and if you're solving for y that's eight equations you have to get y by itself and I don't want to take the time to go and do that you know so 
uh, the, with the algebra star, it is a four-hour test, so you would have enough time to probably go solve them off for a while. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the equations. I'm going to write all these equations in y equals mx plus b. And then I'm going to uh, you know, simplify, or actually not even simplify, but kind of rearrange things into what we call standard form, which is ax plus by equals c. All right, because that's how all of our equations here are written. They're all written in standard form with x and y together, and then your constant on the other side with no fractions. Uh, so that's what we're going to do here on these. So I guess for k1, let's start out with that. The equation start with y, obviously. Uh, we need to find the m and b. So the m for that one, or actually, I'm sorry, the b for that one's negative 2. And then the slope. Slope, so find another good point. Looks like it's going up 3 and over 1. So your m for that equation is 3. So, and actually, I don't have a ton of room here. I'm going to scoot that over. So we will say that that is positive 3 free slope, so 3x, and then minus 2. And then here in a moment, we're going to go and modify that equation to get it into standard form. Okay, now for k2 here, it's got a different y-intercept. starts there at 4, so that means your b value is positive 4. And then it looks like it's going down, what do we got? As far as a nice point here, I think the next nicest point there is 9. So it looks like it's going down 4 and over 9. Let's see. Yeah, I think, and I, the reason too, we could probably assume that I see some equations with 4 and 9 in it, so I bet you one of those might be something like that. So down 4 over 9, that means the slope is negative 4 because it's down 4 and then over 9 units there. So we'll say this other equation is negative 4 over 9 x and then and I guess plus 4. Okay, so those are our two equations. Now they're not in the same format as our answer choices. They're not in standard form, so we need to go ahead and get them into standard form. So we're going to take that 3x minus 2 equation and get x and y together. I'll do this with the, you know, I'll color code this here so we can kind of keep it organized. So to get the x to the other side here, we need to cancel it out. So opposite of positive 3x is negative 3x. And we're going to do that to both sides. Now keep in mind, 3x and y are not like terms. So we just write that as 3x plus y and then equals negative 2. Now notice here we get, for f right here, we get an equation that's really similar to that there. You get... Um, everything's signs different. And that's because if we go and divide everything by negative 1, that flips all of our signs around. Typically with your standard form, typically they want whatever x is, they want it to be positive something there. So they usually switch the signs around on these. So there's your first equation right there. I see that in f. Um, I don't see that in any other. So f might be the best answer, but let's go ahead and check the other equation to make sure we're matching on that one. So the other one, it was y equals negative 4 over 9, x, and then plus 4. So notice with all of our answer choices, we did not have any fractions. So what I'm going to do here to cancel out or get rid of the fractions, is I'm going to multiply everything here by 4. And technically, we say we multiply both sides here by or not 4, by 9, actually. It's whatever the denominator is. Or if you have multiple fractions, it's whatever the common denominator is. So we're going to distribute here on the right-hand side, and then we're just going to write 9y on the left-hand side. So 9y equals, and then 4 ninths of 9 is going to be negative 4, and then put your x with it. All right, and then 9 times the 4 right there, that should be plus 36. Then we need to cancel out the 4x because we want that over with the y. So we'll say 4x plus 9y oops, equals 36. And hopefully that's the second equation. It is right there. 4x plus 9y equals 36. So f has got to be your option there. Now like I was saying before, you can solve each one of these equations for y. Type in, in your graphing calculator and see which ones match. 
Um, you know, that would be a lot of work there, so but that could be another technique. All right, moving along. 49, which statement is true about the graph uh, y equals, and then you got one-third, and then times two-thirds raised to x, so two-thirds multiple times. All right, so if they're asking us a graph, probably a good time to bring up the graphing calculator. Oh, and there's a key. Have that pulled up there. So I have something in there. If you hit Y equals, you can go clear it out. Uh, I think I said in another video before, if you want to type in a fraction, alpha Y equals, and then hit the first option that that brings up there. What was it? One third. I hit one, down, three, and then press the over button. Um, we got another fraction. So alpha Y equals again. Fiddle click. There we go. Fraction. And we'll go two and then three. And over. Close parentheses. And that was raised to X. Here's your raise to button right here below clear. And we'll raise it to X. And then we'll hit graph and see what's going on here. All right. So here's your line right there, and let's talk about our different options. Let's see if I can get this to where we can still kind of see the graph, but then see our answer choices here. All right. Uh, so the graph has a vertical asymptote. So an asymptote, this is kind of a funny word here, but an asymptote, that's uh, where the graph levels off. All right. So the graph actually levels off here horizontally, so it's a, called a horizontal asymptote versus a vertical, because uh, if it is a vertical asymptote, it goes straight up and down here at the end, but it kind of curves and then it shoots up, uh, up and left forever right there, so it does not actually have a vertical asymptote. Let's see what this next one says here. The graph crosses the y-axis at 0, 0,2 ninths. So I'm not actually sure on that one there, so we can go and just look at the table. So I hit second graph and then there's our table. The y-intercept um, is 0, 0,13 so that doesn't match up. So it can't be B. The graph has an asymptote at 1 third. So let's see here. At y equals 1 third so that's a horizontal line. Now if you go and look it's your y values that kind of get small. Here. Let's go back to the graph. All right, so your graph here, if you kind of look, it actually levels off right at zero. So that's going to be incorrect on that one. Right there, it does not. Oh, I guess I made that full screen. But right, anyways, the graph does not level off, but the graph does decrease from left to right. So that's going to be answer D right there on that one. So remember the asymptote levels off. It actually levels off at Y equals 0. We kind of said that there. So that's why someone might choose that answer there. Yep, the graph was at 0, 1 third. I guess we can change that right there. But yep, D is the best answer out of what they gave us. All right, last one here. The table represents some points. On a graph of a linear function, which equation represents the same relationship? Notice that these are all in the format right here. These are called point-slope. So these are all in point-slope form right there. And here is your point-slope form. This is on your formula chart that they give you. X minus X1. And then X1, Y1, that's a point. So any point, I guess, doesn't really matter. X1, Y1. And then M is the slope. So that should be a good indicator that, hey, we need our slope in this case. And to punch out our slope, that's Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And they're going to give that, that to us as well on the star chart. So I guess we'll start out by going and finding the slope there. So just choose an X and a Y value, and actually I'm going to choose the smaller numbers there. Maybe it'll be a little bit easier to punch out, I guess. All right, and then in the numerator, I guess I'm going to go negative 124. 
minus negative 40. Minus a negative 40, that'll change those both to the positive, so it should be plus 40. And then we need to go in that same order in the denominator, so we need to go negative 8 minus negative 1. So those will both change to plus right there. Okay, so then we have negative 124, and then the 40, when you add those or combine those, you get 84. And then that'll be divided by negative 7. And that gets us negative 12. Right there. Unless I did my signs. Oh, you know what? I did my signs wrong here. It should be negative 84 in the numerator there. So that should be positive 12. My bad on that. So positive 12 is the slope there. Notice none of the slopes came out negative. So I would have caught that pretty quick there. In fact, that's what I did. I caught that because all my slopes are positive. So M is 12. And then they're going to use a point, an x comma y. Notice with every single one of these here, it's got some combination with this 20 and 168 point right here. So that's going to be the point that they're probably writing in with your point slope formula. So that means your x1, y1, that's negative 20 comma negative 268. Then we're going to plug all that stuff into your point slope formula. Now you got to be careful because the point slope formula starts out with the y. So you're going to go y minus 268, or y minus negative 268. And then you're going to put your slope, that was 12, and then x minus negative 20. And I guess none of them have minuses there. That's because two minuses next to each other change to a positive there. So it should be plus 268 and then plus 20. So I think h it's going to be the best option for that. So be kind of careful. On uh, J, they just switch around the X and Y's, and that's a common problem, so be really careful with that. And then maybe on F and G right here, maybe you accidentally did your slope backwards, and you did. So we got 12 over 1. These have 1 over 12, so that's probably what happened as far as those answer choices. So be kind of careful on those right there. I believe that is the last one.